holidays, quilt roadies. Thank you for stopping by. I enjoy the company and all the comments and the thumbs up. You guys are awesome. It has been busy, hasn't it? And I want to get the business out of the way right up front, so be sure that you stay tuned till the end of this video. Uh, G will put up a flyer with the winners of all the giveaways from the last video, and congratulations to all of you. Um, I will get those out as soon as I can, which will probably be right after Christmas. So please, if you see your name, email. The email is in the drop-down box. Email me as soon as possible your mailing address. Okay, so as you saw at the beginning of this video, a sweet, sweet quilt that was gifted to me by my dear friend Cheryl. She is um, one half of Stitching with the Sisterlies. You'll have to actually go watch them on Floss Tube. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Floss Tube, it is a um, it's a channel, channels, predominantly about cross-stitch, but it turns out that Stitching with the Sisterlies, both are quilters also. And so on their channel, they share both in the same episode. Um, like this quilt right here was made for me by Colleen, and the quilt at the beginning was a Christmas gift from Cheryl, and it is so right up my alley. It's so sweet. And thank you so much, Cheryl. I love it. Um, so what are we going to do today? I'm going to be binding a quilt. If you remember, I finished the blue quilt earlier this year. Um, I'm not going to be able to hold it, but you know, it was from the Fat Quarter Shop. Isn't that great? And it was done with a Jolly Bar, which is one of their signature um, uh, ways of packaging fabric. And I think that was a Jolly Bar. Yeah. Or no, I take that back. It was a layer cake. It was a layer cake quilt. And I just, since blue was my color of the year, I decided I was going to make a blue quilt. Um, but I am gifting it uh, this holiday to my <coughs> older grandchildren's mother, who was a Christmas baby. Yeah, she was a Christmas baby. And so I have just the, I have, I'm almost done. I've got one side to tack down the binding on. And then I'll be done. So when we're talking, I shall be sewing. <laughs> if I find where I left my needle, it's got to be here someplace. Well, how have you all been? Oh, there it is. How have you all been? This episode is going to be um, packed full of little things. Um, at the towards when I stop talking, when I stop talking. I went to a new quilt shop to me, Quilting Delights, and I videoed the inside of their shop. Now I had heard that they were in the industrial area um, of Portland near a, a what Bob's Red Mill. Everyone knows. Everyone knows Bob, uh, but they've now moved to uh, another suburb of Portland called Milwaukee not Wisconsin, Oregon. And um, so I decided to check it out. And um, it was so perfect um, because you see this Kathy, Kathy uh, Schmidt's a spoon flower. It's going to be a year long, 2024 uh, stitch along where each one you only have to get one a month done. I mean, and look how small they are. And they're so sweet. And it's all one color. 
unfortunately I had not been able to find the color thread that was recommended and I'm not too creative outside the box so I wanted the color that Kathy had chosen and um, I found it at Quilting Delights <laughs> and so here's the thread 578 so if you are doing this particular project and you get this panel from Spoonflower, you can call up Quilting Delights. Uh, also, I will put a link down below for that shop because they do mail order and they do have a website. Uh, they also do long arm quilting and they are a machine repair shop also. And so it's in two different locations across the street from each other. So the quilt shop's on one side of the street and on the other side of the street is the repair shop, the sewing machine repair shop, and the long arm quilting. And you just drop everything off at the quilt shop and they'll truck it over to the other side of the street for you. Um, Chris, I believe that was her name, was the manager that was there and um, she said that they have classes and meetups and um, so you can get that probably all from their website. Yeah, But they had um, machine embroidery which I had not seen at the other quilt shop that I frequent and which I visited today also. Um, so if you're interested in machine um, embroidery, they have it going on there. So I'll let you take a look at that uh, when I do the walk around of the quilt shop later in this video. I was really happy to get this thread because now I'm all ready for January. All ready. I did receive some nice, I might have shown you this already, but from my uh, high school classmate, Danielle, did I did I show you this already? She sent me some hexi fabric. I mean, I can't get over it. It's going to make such cool hexies. Isn't that cool? And this one has all kinds of sewing motifs on it. So I'm going to give those hexies. I really want to get on back on the hexi bandwagon. 2024. Yeah, I'm thinking about it already. I already have my word for the year. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I usually choose a color and a word um, for each year as a way to kind of ground me or um, kind of help me along with the year. Um, it turns out that blue, 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 was my color for 2023 and I chose it because it popped into my head and blue is not my favorite color and it's my fall smallest stash so choosing a color that would kind of push me outside of my box I thought would be a good thing and so I might keep blue for another year I haven't decided because green is really calling to me yeah, but I don't know. I'm kind of, I, I spent bonding with blue all of 2023. Now my word of the year I'll reveal on January 1st. And I choose, I have done this for several years. I choose a word of the year as like this talisman or something to um, either move me emotionally or ground me in some way. And I, with my personality type, I try different ways to bring peace to my life. And so I tend to be fairly ritualistic. And by that I mean um, the things I tend to do the things that bring me comfort um, repetitively, which means that in the morning 
Um, when G gets up and makes the coffee, I light candles. I burn candles every morning um, around my house. And there is something really calming and sweet, especially in the wintertime. I really don't do it as much in the summertime. But in the wintertime, um, if you have any kind of seasonal affect or anything, there's different things that you can do for yourself that will help you move into the day even when it's gray and rainy. Today is absolutely fabulous. It's sunny. There's just scattered clouds. Um, it's cold though, but awesome really awesome day and so we're going to take it because it's going to rain off and on all the way through Christmas. So even if you don't um, celebrate Christmas in the traditional way, um, there's different things that you can help yourself. Those of us who live on the side of the hemisphere where we're in winter, there are different rituals you can set up for yourself. That special cup of tea at, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, or um, I like to have a chocolate spoon in my coffee once in a while, and I get those from Trader Joe's, and they are just a wooden spoon dipped in chocolate, and so sometimes just doing something sweet for yourself, special, no pun intended, <laughs> um, kind of settles. It helps me settle and feel contented. And in the contentment, I usually can be productive. I'm looking for 2024 to be even a more productive year than in 2023, and I feel like I was hitting the mark pretty regularly in um, accomplishing things. But I think I can even push that bar, and I want to. So there are patterns of behavior or choices that I'm going to be making in 2024, and I already started a little bit. So today, after I stopped at Quilting Delights and found this awesome thread, <laughs> I went over to Pioneer Quilts because that is where my um, Wooly Wednesday group is. And once a month we meet, and you can go onto Pioneer Quilts website for their calendar, but once a month the Wooly Wednesday um gals just show up and it's not even all wool that's going on. It is a cross stitch, it is embroidery, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, there was someone who was stitching on wool with Sue Spargo, um, um, and all the, all our favorite designers, you know, it's just so fun to quilt in an environment that has an extraordinary stash of wool. And Pioneer Quilts is rocking that. So here's the thing. I have um, a nice pile of, I don't want to call them UFOs, because, I mean, yeah, UFO stands for unfinished object, but it tends to, in our world, um, have a little bit of a negative connotation because it's like it's languished or something. And I love all the projects that I have. I truly enjoy them. But I also am like a squirrel, and if I see something down the line, I'm like, nuts. <laughs> so this year I intend to make some headway in the projects that I have started. And one of those projects, um, I have at least three wool projects, three uh, fairly large wool projects. 
and I would love to have those be finishes in 2024. So I'm going to, on Wooly Wednesday, show up with a wool project so I can make that happen. And this particular one is by Kathy Campbell, and she is heart to hand. And if you've never seen a heart to hand um, pattern, you need to Google it and look. It is, they are all wonderful. And this one in particular, uh, yeah, see, my sewing room. And it has different uh, sewing ephemera. Is that what you call it? And I had, I had um, all of it prepped. That's what's so amazing. So I'm to take it out of the sleeve here, so it won't get. So I have all of it prepped, and I actually have this done and this done in this little block here, and I am working on this block. But I have these all prepped. So this is a pick-up-and-go project. I just want to show you what I've done. I just want to show off a bit. Yeah. So here's the top. And it's you know, it's not meant to be like a Seuss Bargo. It's meant to be more primitive. So I'm doing a little bit of embroidery, but a lot of buttonhole or whip stitch. So that was the top, and that is all stitched. And then on the side of that top piece is the pin cushion. And I'm actually put real pins in. And I might put fancier pins in there. Then we have the button row. And that is all stitched. And the way I... Um, I, I sound like a broken record, but I will say it again because it will make your life easier. The way I do wool is I fuse the pieces on. You can use your favorite fusible. I don't have any problem needling through this. And I back the back of the fabric with a Pellon product SF-101. And the reason being is that this is just a regular cotton quilting fabric. It's lightweight compared to this two layers of um, wool. So this just gives it a little bit more body. So when I'm holding it and stitching, you know. And then there's my little spool block, all done and embellished. Goes like this. No, no. Goes like this. Am I making you dizzy? <laughs> and so today at Wooly Wednesday, let's see. I was working on this block. And I was tacking down the vines on the plants. Yeah, and I think I'm going to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit in this area, maybe a little filigree of some kind. So if you see the pattern, I have this whole. I have to finish stitching this, and then I am tackling that next row, which is all sewn together. The blocks are all sewn together. I just need to do the stitching on them. Yes. So, and the, and a very practical reason for me to start dealing with the projects that are in process is that I tend to um, 
put the threads in with them so that when I pick up this project box like this that has one project in it, it has all the thread and so my thread is kind of scattered all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to get a little bit more organized in 2024 since we're talking, it's almost that resolution time. And although I'm not big on those resolutions, I do the word and the color, I would like to be able to organize my threads a little better. And one of the ways I can do that is by finishing some of these projects. So I took that to Pioneer Quilts today for Wooly Wednesday and had a fabulous time. It was an... Uh, we had a nice group of gals that were um, doing all kinds of different work. Um, Kathy was cross-stitching. There was just a whole bunch of different stitching going on. But we were um, all relaxed in this week before Christmas, which to me is a win. It is an absolute win. Um, so that is where I was today. And I think now I can kind of kick back. And I know Enzo's been kind of um, a little bit, you know, I think he's been partying quite a bit. Um, get my glasses here. Yeah. I have so many big dreams. How about you? Um, do you have big dreams for 2024 when it comes to your quilting? I, I hear over and over again, I need not to buy another thing. I'm not going to buy another thing. Well, I've kind of given that up. But I do have to say that I have to be very, very in love with it. Um, to buy it these days. It has to be, yeah, I I, I can't sleep at night unless I own it. Because <laughs> I really want to get a lot of things done. And there's so many quilts. I did, um, you know, I told you before that I sent off the three little quilts and it made me realize that I have so many more to make. Uh, so you know, that side of my family is fairly large, and there's a lot of kids, and so I need to just be ticking off the list, checking it twice. And, um, because for me, I mean, when I first started quilting, it was all about trying different techniques and, um, learning, um, pushing the envelope, all of that. But I am finding now that my quilting is more about making the perfect quilt for the perfect little person or person in my life. I just, um, that's what I want to do in 2024. 24. Um, so I'm Work, I'm going to be working on dorm quilt. I know I we have a we have a family member who's heading off to college next fall, so I got to get that working. And um, I have been trying to find, and I know I have it around here. So isn't that funny when you know you have. You're looking for a specific theme fabric, but you kind of think you have it. Yeah. I want to make a Paris quilt, and I know that I have it, and I know that I have a pattern. And <laughs> so it's kind of like trying to rebond with, um, rebond with what you have and then you have to always add a little bit to it don't you it's not like we have 
every single thing we need. I want to make more scrap quilts in 2024, but boy, I don't know about you. <coughs> scrap quilts means I have to go to the go to the fabric store again to add to the. I saw this gal at Pioneer Quilts, and she had, she had a whole. It's like she bought. There must have been like, maybe ten or fifteen bolts of fabric, and she just bought like a. A certain amount off each bolt and it was very colorful and I said to her um, oh looks like you're gonna have some fun and she said oh it's for this pattern and she showed me the pattern and it was really it was like a rainbow quilt it was very pretty and I said oh that's gonna be nice and she goes oh I'm not gonna make it it's for my sister-in-law <laughs> and I said do you like your sister-in-law <laughs> That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> and she laughed, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we had our family Christmas already, and um, it's made the holidays seem very calm. You know, not so much activity. It's, um, I've actually been able to kick back a bit, and we had to have it earlier because of everybody's work schedule and um, to get everybody together and I don't know I'm kind of liking it <laughs> I might have to celebrate Christmas in the middle of December yeah and for those of you on the other side of the hemisphere with different weather and um, you know whether it's Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or whatever the celebration is for you, um, it's, uh, I've always lived, in my adult life, I've always lived in very seasonal places, and so um, the holiday season is not about this beautiful sunlight usually. It's about snow and shoveling and all of that. And you have that really good feeling. And um, uh, But for those of you on the other side, it's a sunny Christmas. It's a sunny Christmas time. Yeah. I've just about made it through all of the um, good Christmas movies. I, I differentiate good Christmas movie, movies as opposed to the not so good ones. And um, I watched White Christmas, the old one with Bing Crosby. Um, that was, it, I just, you know, it's classic. There's, um, but it's so interesting that it was during a different time and place and sensibility and all the sensitivities that we have now weren't there then so there's some things about those old movies that you go whoa <laughs> and um, then I watched um, Spirited which is was a funny and that's with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell and it's like a modern day Scrooge and I actually watched Scrooge with Patrick Stewart, and that was like one of my favorite Scrooge movies. So I'm almost about the end of the good Christmas movies, and I'd have to move into the old Christmas, or the, I don't want to say they're bad. They're predictable, the Hallmark predictable ones. I, um, I just, uh, yeah, not not too much my thing, you know, not, not too much my thing. I'll, I like the Minions Christmas. <laughs> so I did, uh, I have been watching that while I've been stitching at night. And I finished The Fortunes of Jaded Women, which was the latest book I finished. And I enjoyed every page of that, every single page of it. Um, 
<coughs> so now I'm moving on to some new um, things to read. And yeah. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned. Get yourself something to drink. Snack on so you can walk around Quilting Delights. And in the drop down box, I will try to put all the links for everything. At the end, don't forget, <coughs> um, will be the flyer with the winners and uh, of the giveaway and I say congratulations to all of you. Have a wonderful holiday if you're celebrating. Take care. I hope the weather is safe for you and that you are enjoying family and friends. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.